glamour. One week in Abu Dhabi, all expenses paid for all four of us. Get out of town. My point exactly. I can hear the decadence calling. I laughed, I walked out, I promptly directed Cosmo. It uh, was terrific. Then my work here is done. <laughs> I sat down to write this movie and I thought, I want it to be a party. I want people to go in. I really wanted to hear laughter in the theater. Mm -hmm. And I wanted people to leave feeling like they'd been someplace. This movie was intentionally an antidote to the first movie. This was movie was supposed to be a caper. It should be a romp. It should transport our audience to a wonderful, exotic, glamorous, far off, wonderfully foreign place. So a large portion of the film, of course, takes place in uh, Abu Dhabi, which promises great exotic shooting locations for the whole cast. Except me. Except you. I just always seem to be shooting here in New York City. Although I understand that uh, John Corbett did not bank make things any easier by calling you from. <laughs> 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 he did, he did, God bless him. I'm having a hot flash. You're fine. Seriously, they're starting. Look, you're on a camel in the middle of the Arabian desert. If you're not having a hot flash, you're dead. Samantha, in, in the film, of course, she's on, now on the brink of, of menopause, which is not focused in pop culture that often. I want to get out of the chair and just kiss you right on the lips for saying that. <laughs> menopause is just a phase, you know? But you're gonna have to go through it if you're lucky enough to live this long. And for Michael to open it up was just probably the best gift that an actress of my age could have. Miranda has always struggled with, uh, she never thinks things are gonna go well. She always sees the problem. She always sees the glass half empty. In this film, she's finally, she's finally really blossomed and she's finally happy. She's figured out who she is as a wife, as a mother, and she's figured out even uh, as a lawyer, she might be having some trouble, but if she's having some trouble, Life is too short to just just keep grinning and bearing it. The veneer is cracking a little bit mm -hmm, for, mm -hmm. for Charlotte. Well put, well put. She has her daughter Lily, who's adopted, and then she has Rose, and she expects herself to be the perfect mother. It's hard because you can't control everything, and nobody is the perfect mother, and I'm sure that whatever Charlotte's idea is totally based on like, you know, Betty Crocker or something. Right. So, you know, it's not even doable. What's the secret to finding this consistent, it's such a satisfying groove with, with all the other ladies? Um, I think that the four of us are very different from each other, and I think the four characters are very different from each other, and yet we all love each other very much. From the first read-through, even before we were on film, there was a chemistry in the room, and there always has been. And it does feel like family. These are just really, really gifted comedians that I'm playing opposite, and they're all so different, and they all approach the work differently, and they all have different skills in the genre of comedy, but they are just wonderful. I think the real secret is Michael Patrick's writing, because no matter how you click as a cast, no matter how great your costumes are, if you don't have the writing and the dialogue and the character development over time, it's not gonna last, so that is a secret. We made a deal ages ago. Man, babies, doesn't matter. We're soulmates. A Jasmine and Aladdin? Yes, sweetie, but with cocktails. 